and with us. And Luke chapter number 10, verse number 38. You know what? When you have some moments like that, and uh, they're talking about my brother-in-law having little short-term memories of having, I said, but I see young people doing this. It ain't just a uh, senior's part, and it ain't just somebody's got had a problem. I mean, you see young people, they, they forget everything. They lose their books. They lose their everything, their phones, and all kind of things, and they forget a lot of things themselves. So, hey, a lot of pressure, a lot of fast times, a lot of things going on in this old world. But I'm glad God's on the throne, and I'm glad His grace is sufficient. In Luke chapter number 10, Verse number 38, somebody said, you've used this before, but God just laid a verse on my heart this morning. I'm telling you the truth, and I said, God, I'll just preach it. If I have preached it, I know I can't preach the same way. In fact, I didn't even make no notes today. I'm going to preach today. And uh, somebody said, well, preacher, you are living dangerously. Well, I just feel like this is what God said to do. But over here in Luke chapter number 10, verse number 38, he said, now it came to pass as they went, that they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And Martha was comely. I mean, she got distracted and all this, cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, Doest thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha. He didn't say it like, Martha. No, he said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Would you bow with us for prayer? Heavenly Father, I bow my head in the presence of a good, loving, and holy God. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful singing. The singing was real great this morning, and I thank you for it. And God, I pray as we come uh, to bring a message, I pray that you'd help us with what we've studied and prepared to come to bring a message from God's holy word. We're trusting Lord, that you'd be with us, you'd anoint us with the power of God. First of all, God, I say, if there's anything, as I was on my knees while I go in the office and at the house, and I said, God, if there's anything there between me and you, God, I want it out. I really want to be able to have the power to preach God's holy word. And, Lord, I pray that someone lost to get saved, someone that their hearts got cold, have been saved, but they just walked away from the Lord. Would you draw them back today? And then, Lord, for these families that are hurting that deaths come in, would you be there? These in the hospital is going to have surgeries, and others, Lord, are going through cancers and different things. It's a hard times on families right now with different things. But, God, I know that you have power in heaven and earth. Lord, bless and have your way, and we'll bow our head and praise you in Jesus' name for what you do. Amen. You may be seated, and I forgot to say, Gwen been out sick, and she's back today, too. You when you start saying things, sometimes you miss some folks and uh, others, and any I did miss, uh, but I, I want to get into the message today. As you look here in this home, this family constituted of three of the family members at the Word of God. It only talks about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Right here, you'll read about Mary and Martha, and then John chapter number 11 and chapter number 12 is a whole thing that I don't know of anywhere else that they were mentioned. These are the place, but they were dear to the Lord Jesus Christ's heart. They had a special part in their lives there for them. And my dear friend, as they were so near to them, then as we begin to look out there, as they come in and Jesus went to their house, and he went over to their house, and my dear friend, things started happening. And as he looked into the house here, I want to bring a message out of verse 42, but one thing is needful. They just one thing that's really needful. And Mary and Martha out there, he said, I want to tell you, here's what happened. Martha, look at it in verse number 38. And the Bible said it came to pass as they went 
that they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Here's Martha and Mary. They have welcomed the Lord Jesus Christ into their house. They were so glad that he was there and they welcomed him into their house. And they say, you look, both of them did. The word of God said that she's the one that greeted him and said, come on in. And here's what happened. As the Lord began to talk, Mary just got right down at his feet. I mean, he got to the, she just got right down where we all would be much better Christians if we'd get right down at his feet. If we'd just get humble down at his feet. But have you ever been around him? I'm bad myself. And here Martha got distracted. As the Lord was talking, she wasn't called up like Mary was. Did you notice that? She was sitting there and start with, invite him into the house. He began to talk to him, and Mary just got right down at his feet. But Martha, while he was talking, her mind was going to this, and her mind was going to that. You ever been talking to somebody, and they're like, they was listening, but then all at once they just, they wasn't paying you no attention to what you were saying. In fact, they turned and walked off. Sister Betty Hamilton, I call her by name. I was talking to her one day, and she said, Preacher, I want you to look me in the face when you talk to me. <laughs> so I like to see people look at me when they talk. Amen. She said that to me, didn't you? Amen. And uh, she was saying that, and, uh, you know, I got to thinking about that. A lot of people, you know, you'll be there with them, but you're not there with them. Understand what I'm saying? Martha was there with Mary, but she wasn't really there. She wasn't taking in what the Lord says. It's just like if you went to Ralph and Laura's house over there, and if there was something on about hunting, it made no difference what she said to him. Oh, he may say, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take the credit card, and I'm going over and buy a bunch of stuff. He said, okay, okay, that's fine. He was there, but he wasn't really there. That's what happened to Martha. Some of you other hunters would uh, be sort of like that. I mean, Junior and Evelyn said, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to take me a trip. Out. Well, have fun, you know, and all of this. I'm, I'm heading down to hunting. I'm going to get feud in families right here before I get started good. They were there, but they wouldn't really comprehend. Judy has talked to me, and, and she was saying this, and I said, you know, I wonder when this happened. She said, I told you about that. You men ever had that? She said, I told you. How many times do I have to tell you? I done told you about that, but you wasn't listening. My mind was somewhere else. My body might have been in her presence, but I was thinking about something else. That's exactly what happened to Martha. She was there, and when you get doing that, you know what happens? You get distracted. Now, men can hear, I, I promise you. Sister Robbie say, run, the meal's done. He might not heard nothing else, but here he goes. We have what you call selective hearing. She had got caught up. You know what she was sitting there thinking about? Oh, Lord, he's here. I hadn't got the room prepared. And what if he's going to stay tonight? And it's not straightened up. It's not fixed. And oh, my, what are we going to cook? Lord, you know better. Why did you bring him over to the house tonight? You know I didn't have nothing to cook. And you know the house is a mess. And, and she got distracted like we do. She was caught up worrying about her surrounding instead of worshiping him. She was more concerned. She wasn't thinking about the good fellowship we can have. And we may have to go out to McDonald's, which wasn't no McDonald's. But she wasn't thinking about we could, we'll work something out, but I just got to hear what he's saying. 
I got to just hear what's going on. What is he talking about? And she gets caught up on every word. Mary was caught up on every word and probably crying. And she's good at that and get down his feet and wipe her hair and the tears on his feet. She get right on his feet and said, I want to hear something. But Martha, she was one of them fit pictures. She was in there in the kitchen making sure that everybody knew that she didn't like what was going on. Pouring pots and pans and throwing things and making all kind of noise. She was out with her sister because her sister was at the feet of Jesus. Not only that, she is out with the Lord. Somebody said, wait a minute. She said, don't you care? Said, Lord, don't you care that I'm having to do the serving? Look at it. How about some of you? You've, you've done the same thing. Lord, don't you care what I'm going through? Look at this. I've got all these bills. i got everything's due. Everything's happening. All these things are going on. And we get cumbered and distracted from the Lord and saying, don't you care? She was even out with the Lord. Said, don't you care that I'm doing all the serving? She was having some of them self-pity trips. Why is it I'm always the one has got to do it? Why is it me that has to do all this stuff? These other people in the church, they could do it. Why? Why me? And we get on our little self-pity trip. I've been there. I've done that. I know. One thing, sometimes one thing we forget, what's the most important thing in life, it's him. It's him. It's all about him. It's not about Johnny and I. It's not about the deacons. It's not about the Sunday school teacher. It's not about the choirs. It's not about the special singers. It's not about, it's about him and what we're doing for him and listen for him and he'll speak one thing we like you may like one thing but that one thing can mess you up I've told it about my wife and I hope she don't throw a book if they have moved the books out around her I remember when and she knows what I'm going to say so you've told that several times of me I remember when Jeff and Dana's and them little girl passed away. And they lived over there. And that's when all of our church, we would take food to the house. Everybody would fix up and they'd fix dessert and they'd take it in. And we took it in over the house. And Judy and myself, she took her food in and we left out of the driveway and we had somewhere else we had to be at. And we was going down the road and all at once she said, Oh no! What have I done now? She said, you know what i done? I said, no. She said, I made a banana pudding, but I forgot the bananas to put in it. And Jeff and Dana was eating at that, and they said, this sure is good. What is this? They was trying to be. Just one thing that she liked, and it wasn't banana pudding. It, she, she fixes hers different than anybody else. She don't do uh, the, the old-fashioned way with the white, egg white, and all that stuff. She's got a special one that she fixes up and uh, on that. But she, she said, I forgot the banana pudding. She said, it was good. See, you just worried about nothing. One thing, I remember on the job, I went out and, I went down there at Browson and got me one of them big old hamburgers. Before I used to get gout, I used to eat them big old things. Lord, I was counting on that big old hamburger. I sat down in the floor. I asked my blessing when I was doing ceramic tile. And I sat there, and 
all at once I prayed, and then I raised my head up, and, and I started eating, and I said, oh, my gracious. This is the flattest tasting hamburger I have ever eaten in my life. And I said, something wrong with this hamburger. It don't taste right. And I opened it up. He had all the other ingredients that you need. It didn't have mayonnaise, by the way. And, uh, but it did have lettuce, tomato, and mustard, and ketchup. You know that commercial on Wendy's had out? Where's the beef? No beef. One thing it liked. I had the lettuce. I had the mater. I had the mustard. I had the ketchup. I had my tea. I had my french fries. But no beef. One thing I liked. I'd like to have some meat in my hamburger bun out there. But it wasn't. I, I tried to eat that, and I just couldn't hardly eat it. I choked it down trying to do without what I had a taste for. My dear friend, sometimes we miss it by one thing. The rich young ruler came to Jesus in, over there in Mark chapter number, uh, what did I give you, brother? I believe it was chapter number 17, was it? No, 10 in verse 17. And he came, he came doing all the right things. He came running. He came kneeling. And he, I mean, he done all the right things. What people would say, he's got it down. He's down there. But you know what he went through? He told them to keep the commandments and I'll not read it all. He said, you keep the commandments. He said, this I've done for my youth up. And he said in that latter verse of that same uh, part of that, the Bible says here in verse number, I believe it is verse 21, and Jesus behold him and loved him and said unto him, one thing thou likest. You can have all the other. You can join a church. You can get baptized. You can tithe. You can be faithful. You can know how to act in the church. You can know how to put on a show. You can cry. You can do everything that it looked like a Christian would do. You can get humble. You can humble yourself. You can do all these things. But if you like one thing, you missed it all. It's all in vain. When you leave the Lord out, when you've not trusted Him in your heart and in your life, you can get it all. You can, you can have everybody fooled. You can tell everybody, I don't know if there's anybody in the church a Christian, but if they hadn't been born again, they'll lift their eyes in a devil's hell. You can know it all, but if you don't know him, she got tore up. Martha did. She was all cumbered me and get distracted or get burdensome over her. And she just got all bent out of portion. She didn't, she didn't like, you know what she started doing? She even tried to tell the Lord what to do. Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? And then she started telling the Lord what to do. Bid her, therefore, she would help me. How many times we try to tell God what to do? God's not a bent over old man upstairs, and I'm getting old so I can say oh. He's God, and he knows what's best for every one of us. I have no right to tell God. Now, God, some, some preachers are Get up and say, now it's said in the Word, so you got to do it. They may take it out of content. The Word of God is wrote in a content. You make the Word of God say anything you want to, take it out of content. You can make it say what you want it to say. Like Judas went out there and hung himself, and then in one place over there said, go do likewise. Word of God is wrote in a content that God had put it there.
for a purpose. I have no right, neither do you have no right. Well, the devil can quote scripture. And misuse scripture. He tried to get the Lord to bow to him. He said, you know men shall not live by bread alone. He's wanting him to make the stones be bread. The Lord said, men shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. She was telling him, Lord, you go tell her, my sister, to get in here. Somebody said, why does this not happen? Why does that not happen? Now, have you ever had somebody to tell you how to drive? Lord, I'm seeing these women turning their men. I'm seeing Stanley grinning. I'm seeing Chad's looking straight at me. He ain't going to look at his wife. When I tell my wife, well, you should have done this, she'll say, do you want to drive? See, I admit mine, y'all won't do that. <laughs> but we look out there and we try to tell the Lord, how to run his business. One church may do something over yonder, and we think we got to do like that church. We're a pun for it. We're not like every other church. God's got us here for us to be pun for. I'm just a plain old-fashioned preacher. Old-fashioned preaching is going out of style. Old-fashioned singing, southern sing, gospel singing is being pushed back. I still like it. I still like the old-fashioned shouting. I still like the old-fashioned of worshiping of God. I still like to get up and holler and preach. Preach the word of God. He said, lift your voice like a trumpet. Crawl out and spare not. I don't want nobody to put a rope around me and tell me what I've got to preach or what I know. I don't preach to please people. I preach to please him. You ever try to preach? What if I try to please you folks, every one of you? Everybody's got different ideals. What if I took everybody's idea and I preached y'all's idea? We'd be as confused as a termite and a yo-yo. That's the reason we need some men of God to get back to their knee bowing and get a hold of the horns of the altar. That's the reason this morning I said, God, I'm not writing them down. I'm going to preach like you want me to preach. And I'm saying I'm laying it aside and just step in there and preach. I told Brother James while ago, I said, I'd like for just to do two for them and, and do two for the other. And I said, then I feel like God's got me to preach this morning. There's something burning on the end. I'm glad I still get a burn. And I'm not against preachers announcing a week ahead and put it in there. I'm just not one of them can do that. Sometimes I walk in the pulpit and God changes it and I, I go another route. Because you've got to preach, thus saith the word of God. I don't believe that you get up there and, and be plumb ignorant about it. And I, I know I hear preachers get up and preach and they'll say, Oh, I just go behind the pulpit. I've not done any study and I've done nothing out there. I'm just going to wait and God put it in my mouth. And you're going to be up there and get embarrassed because the word of God said to study. To show yourself approved. A workman that needed not be the shame, but rightly dividing the word of truth. 
Well, somebody said, I got commentaries to tell me what we do. If you want to know about the book, go to the author. We need some preachers back in the pulpit with a little fire in them. Ain't nothing no worse than you got to listen to somebody get five and six points out in the congregation dying, and they're up there. Got to, I got to get every one of them out. They may have had a good message to start with. About an hour and an hour and a half later, they're still doing it and still doing it because they feel, hey, I believe we need some people to get down on their knees and say, oh, God, what do you have for us? That's what happened over there. She tried to tell the Lord what to do. That didn't get very far. Look at the next verse. Verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about me. She is a troubled woman. Look at the next verse. But one thing is needful now. And Mary hath chosen that good part. It shall not be taken away from her. Martha was to the point, not only was she upset at Mary and Jesus, she didn't like her own self. She was a troubled woman. If you ever see somebody that gets trouble, boy, they are something else. When you see somebody, I mean, that the devil got a hold of them and feeding them everything and anger's building and building and building, Ready to explode. That's where Martha was at. If it wasn't that the Lord wasn't there, if it wasn't that he couldn't help her, all she had on her mind was things that were just temporal. They ain't, they're not going to last. She was just thinking about what's going on around her right then. And worrying herself sick. When she could have been down there saying, let's have a meeting, Lord. I want to get my, my sister. I want to get down. Can I get down with her beside you? Lord, would you present me? I was wrong. I got to thinking in my mind, got to wondering. I got trouble, and I got all upset, and I got things blowed out of porch, and I just, I just, I'm a mess, Lord. I want to get back. I don't know what she's got and what she's doing. Lord, could I just join in with her? What if we do that? Lord, she's down there. Let me get down there too. I'm sorry, Lord, saying you don't, can you, do you not care? Lord, I'm sorry the way I felt about my sister worshiping you. Lord, I'm sorry that I just blowed up. Lord, I'm sorry I'm holding these old grudges in my heart against her and I'm holding it against a brother or sister and, and I'm not going to let go and I'm going to be so hard-hearted I'm going to fight it to the end and I'm just, gonna, I'm just not going to give in. I just ain't going to do it. I just ain't going to do it. I'm preaching a funeral service. Which are you going to choose? Are you get some things from God? Or are you going to live that same old fleshly way? That flesh will feed you things. You can't put confidence in this flesh. I preach Sunday night, the message I preach. And you remember... About me preaching that, that people was afraid of failures. They was afraid of, I said, I dread for Monday to come because I'm going to face what I preach. But I preach that night helped me more than it helped you. There's some verses in there that God just took that out. And I said, I ain't worried about nothing. I'm just worried about pleasing him. And I just want him. To get glory. And I said, I can't help what others do. I can't make folks do things. All I do is just preach the word of God. It's up to them. But Lord, I want to please you. And you know what? I had a big failure in my life. 
And the devil said, look at you. But you know what happened? I learned you don't quit. I preached to myself. I said, I don't quit. When I hit failures, I said, I just, I'm not quitting. What you need to do is get it between you and God and get it right. I can't make you come down here. It's like Sean couldn't help him barbarous follow him math because he wasn't looking forward today. He's sore today. There's a lot of things in our life we don't like that goes on. But I know a God can turn it around. You live in that flesh. You feed that flesh and you talk that stuff and you live that stuff and that's always on your mind. You live it, you live it, you live it, you live it and that's all you think and that's all you think and all the time. It's going to destroy you. If you don't get to Jesus. And boy, when I preach Sunday night, God got my attention. Yes! quiet if you just bow your head Chris won't you come play softly and then I'm just going to get that song up just in just a few minutes when I take it right there a whole lot of Satan I'm going to give an invitation on that I'm going to play softly and bring the piano up Doug get ready please his heads are bowed and eyes are closed could I ask you a question I ain't trying to fit nobody's life. But you're getting distracted from what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to win the loss at any cost. We're supposed to be laborers for Christ out in the field. God saved us Get down at his feet and to worship him and to love him. All these other things are going to fade away and they'll be gone. New houses, new cars, and all the money and everything in the world can never take a place of the Lord Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than mansions. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, as you was preaching, God touched my heart. I'm letting everything distract me, my surroundings, the things I'm hearing, the things that's going on, and I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of Satan. I've lost my worship and humbling in his presence. I really need to get close to God today. Would you pray for me? I'd just like to slip my hand up for prayer and say, Preacher, I'd like for you just to pray for me. One's already coming. Maybe somebody else just feel like you ought to come. Preacher, I just want to get down at his feet. I don't want to get sidetracked. Would you pray for me today? I'd like to slip my hand up for prayer. I need help from God. God bless you, I see it. God bless you, I see it. God bless you, I see it. Thank God. Another lady's coming. Another lady's coming. Give me some ladies working in the altar, please. Right over here. Help her. I'm glad God loves us. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost of God. I don't know when I felt the Spirit so strong. We get distracted. But it don't stop God from loving us. Woo! Well, I feel God. I feel the Holy Ghost of God. Woo! Well, God set me free from some of the things that bothered me, troubled me. I'm glad of it. Hallelujah. Hey, maybe somebody else say, Preacher, would you pray for me? I just really need prayer today. I want to get closer to God. Slip that hand up and take it down. It's one. God bless you. I see it. It's another one. 
People are coming. No, I appreciate it. Someone else, just slip it up and take it down. God bless you, dear lady. Another one coming. Help her pray. I need another lady to help her pray. Sister Jan, would you come and help her pray right here? Only God knows our heart. God laid it on my heart. One thing thou likest, it's the most important thing, is getting in his presence. If you have nothing, just slip that hand up for prayer and take it down. God bless you, I see it. Is you another one? Fix your praying. They're going to sing, oh, what a Savior. I'm glad we got a Savior that loves us. I wonder if there's one said, I've never been saved. Well, I appreciate it. Folks are still coming. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Is there one said, I've not been saved. Would you pray for me? Slip it up right now and take it down. Is there one in the building? Heavenly Father, they sing, oh, what a Savior. Oh, we might just want to get at his feet. Oh, we ought to do like Mary. Get down there. Junk this other stuff. That's just junk. That's fleshly stuff. It's fleshly things that's destroying our testimony. It's fleshly things that's turned us down that people are losing confidence. Oh, God. We get in your presence. You turn it around. Speak to hearts and save that this Lord as they sing. Oh, what a Savior. I love you, Lord, and thank you for being my Savior. Help these in the altars, they pray. In Jesus' name.